this is Pound, and I'm back with another video for Chapter 6 on Advanced Genetics from BJU Biology's 4th edition. We're going to start talking about Section 6b on Population Genetics, and we're going to start with Subsection 6.4 on the Gene Pool. So our objectives today are to explain the difference between population and gene pool, discuss how mass selection, hybridization, and inbreeding affect the gene pool, and describe desirable as well as undesirable effects of hybridization. So, so far, we have been talking about genetics on an individual level, how it affects the individual. Now we're going to take a look at the genetics of large groups and specifically focusing on populations. And a population is all the members of the same type of living thing within an area. So here you can see a population of elephants. And sometimes these populations uh, can be separated and isolated. For instance, African elephants are different from Asian elephants because they have been separated and isolated. And this happens with many different populations around the earth. When we're talking about populations and we're talking about genetics, we focus on the gene pool. This is the sum of all the alleles that every member of a species population could possess at a given time. In other words, they're all the genes present in a given population. So these would be all the genes present for the, that group of elephants that we just saw. It also, this is why, um, say, different, uh, we see the cats here. There's different genes available for the color of these cats, for their eye color, for the coat color in the population that is present in that area. This is also why with humans, you see in different areas of the world, different characteristics coming up with them because they have been isolated and say in the Scandinavian areas, there's a lot of blue eyes and blonde hair. That is because those alleles are present for that population and became isolated there. Where in other parts of the world, say in Asia, you see darker brown eyes and black hair and, that, and darker skin because those are the genes and alleles that are present for that population because different peoples became isolated due to bodies of water, mountains, and other uh, landscape um, features. <clears throat> In populations, you see genetic variation. And variation is the differences between individual organisms of the same kind. And these differences are based on genotype, the expression of different individual characteristics in organisms of the same kind. So these are the natural differences between organisms from the same pool. There's always a variety. And remember, this is especially so for individuals, for organisms that reproduce sexually due to meiosis. So you get this variation. Now, a germ mutation will affect the gene pool, but remember, a somatic mutation will not. And in the background, a mutation like that might be something like uh, albinism. And so we have an albino snake, and <clears throat> that is most likely a germ mutation. Now, if that's a germ mutation, it can be passed on to offspring. But if it's just a somatic mutation, so germ mutation is in the sex cells and the sperm and egg. But if it's a somatic mutation, that is in the other cells in this snake's body, it will not be passed on to its offspring. When we're talking about population genetics, we also talk about mass selection. This is the method for selecting breeding stock in which only the desirable organisms are selected. And this happens all the time where we are selecting organisms. Um, for example, dog breeding would be mass selection. Also, mass selection can happen naturally. It's not just artificial humans doing it. Say there is a disease in trees. 
Well, the disease wipes out all those trees that are not resistant to it, but maybe there are some trees that are resistant to the disease, so they survive. So mass selection can happen either artificially or it can be natural. Now, creationists and evolutionists both agree that mutations are the only way to create new alleles. But when I'm talking about mass selection, we're talking about traits that are already there. We're not talking about creating new traits. We are selecting for traits that already exist. And changes caused by mutations, however, do not prove evolution. And we will be getting more into that in another chapter. So one type of mass selection is hybridization. This is the crossing of two genetically unrelated organisms. So even though it's a dog and we've crossed two dogs, I have here a golden doodle. And I have a golden doodle because I've we've crossed a poodle with a golden retriever. So that is an example of hybridization. <clears throat> Hybridization tends to produce heterosis. This is hybrid superiority over parents, hybrid vigor, we call this. Uh, and it, it usually makes stronger organisms. Um, it, we do this a lot of times for milk production, for crop production. Producing hybrids, they're just stronger a lot of times because what you do is when you cross them, you're after the good traits and they tend to also mask bad traits because if they're unrelated, then their genes are quite different. So hopefully the dominant traits will hide any bad recessive traits that could lead to disease or other things. And so that's why this is called hybrid vigor. We do this a lot with crops. Um, this is also why with, say, dogs, we have bred into dogs, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes in breeding. We have bred into dogs a lot of bad traits as well as the good traits that we want. And so actually, mutts, as we call them, tend to be healthier because we're breeding individuals that are not as closely related. This is also why humans do not marry cousins or close relatives because uh, of breeding in bad tra the bad traits as well as the good traits. So um, it just produces better offspring. There's also inbreeding, the mating of closely related organisms. This is what we have done with dogs and other livestock. And like I said, we produce desirable traits like the Dalmatian, the coloring, uh, perhaps jobs that they do. They've been bred for hunting. They've been bred for hunting waterfowl. Uh, they've been bred for uh, tracking. Now with inbreeding, not only do we breed those desirable traits, but we breed undesirable traits as well. For example, uh, I believe that Dalmatians one of the things we bred into them is blindness. Other breeds, we have bred in things like epilepsy. We have uh, bred in problems with the hips and other joints. And so there are many other things that we not only breed in with the desirable traits, but the undesirable traits when we breed close relatives. And so this is the mating of an organism with itself in the case of plants or with a close relative to produce organisms that are homozygous for a particular trait. And again, there's a beagle in the background bred for tracking, um, but also, like I said, uh, epilepsy has also been bred into that breed, which is undesirable. So our objectives today were to explain the difference between population and gene pool, discuss how mass selection, hybridization, and inbreeding affect the gene pool, and describe desirable as well as undesirable effects of hybridization. So don't forget your five questions and keep watching to answer the questions at the end.